Mr. Darcy sucks, and Bridget Jones is a bitch. So not the character Bridget Jones, like she's got her own problems. The movie is a bitch and Mr. Darcy sucks. He's literally the worst. I watch a lot of movies and when I told my friends about my opinion on Bridget Jones, they wouldn't hear a word of it because he's perfect. Apparently he's like the perfect man. He's like everything I ever want. He's so gentle. And, uh, don't care. I hate him. Like you're allowed to have an opinion and so am I. Let's, let's discuss our views calmly and really nicely. And I'll present my side and you can also present your side. And we'll do this like actual grown adults who know how to like be generally kind. So with the first two seconds of narration, we learn that Bridget is in her early 30s, right? And she's fat. Oh, and she's single. That's the most important one. She's single. Now, when I say that she's fat, she's not actually fat. She's just like a normal sized person. Um, and apparently that makes her an underdog. Then we meet Mark Darcy, okay? He's good looking. He's a wealthy human rights barrister, which just means that like, he's good looking, he's rich, and he's a lawyer for like, nice people. Um, but then also we learn that he was divorced. And so that makes him an underdog as well, I guess. And that's all the info that we're given. We're given nothing else. Apparently she lives just round the corner from you. Mother, I do not need a blind date, particularly not with some verbally incontinent spinster who smokes like a chimney, drinks like a fish, and dresses like her mother. He's really, really rude to her in their first meeting, so she's like, yep, fine, I'll be rude to you too. Boy, bye. And she just leaves and goes home and cries, because, look, honestly, same. She's decided that she's not good enough for a man and she's gonna start a diary, Bridget Jones's diary specifically, all right? And she's gonna track her weight and her alcohol and cigarette intake because she's gonna make herself good enough for a man. Honestly though, I don't think that she needs to lose weight. I think she needs to lose her friends because they're, they're awful. Bridget's bestie, learning model, okay? Likes to cry in the toilets because she didn't get any action from Cedric Diggory or Harry Potter while in the prefect's bathroom, even though she tried really, really hard. And she's still sad about it. But, but Bridget has other friends though. I mean, one of them likes to swear a lot. That's a good quality. Um, but her other friend also wrote one hit song in the 80s and has done nothing since. So that's fun and quirky, like like a really a good good group, good influences. It's a shock to see that she actually turned out somewhat normal, given that her mother is a horrendous racist. His wife is Japanese, a very cruel race, and her father is a big dull dud. Bridget is hell bent on finding a suitable boyfriend, and her friends are on board, and they're like, "Yes, that's gonna make everything better. It will. They'll fix everything." Will it though? Because it sounds like you've got a hole in your heart. It's not going to be fixed with a pain. It's a different hole. And then we meet Bridget's boss, Hugh Grant, slash his character's name is Daniel Cleaver, but we're going to refer to him as Hugh Grant because they're the same person. He makes a crack. He recognizes got quite a nice body and she happens to be wearing quite a short skirt today. He sends her a wildly inappropriate email telling of this and he knows it's inappropriate because in a later email he says oh yeah sorry about that inappropriateness by the way nice tits but like he's her friggin boss like just to reiterate he is her superior and even though this is 2001 and like me too wasn't a thing yet he knows it's wrong why do he risk why would he risk his career he's obviously selfish like why would he do that like HR is a thing like Toby Flenderson hello my boss is, is emailing me awful things about my non-existent skirt. And I, I think he should be reprimanded for that. Even though like, like I, Bridget, think he's a bit cute. Even though he's objectively not. Probably not the best way to crack on. What do you think, Toby? Re reckon HR, we should, we should check that out. We should, we should call head office. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, cool. 
Yeah. Yep, good. Let's do that. Oh, and while we're there, also, I'd like to make a report about, um, like, his his boss above that, um, Mr. Fitzherbert. Um, I call, I, Bridget, call him Mr. Tits Pervert because he's always staring at my tits. And I think he should be reprimanded for that because it, it's kind of sexual harassment and he doesn't make any effort to hide it. And it's kind of gross and, and makes me very, very uncomfortable. Cool. Thanks, Toby Flenderson. You're the best. Sexual harassment is not charming. It's really, really not. It's really just like another reason for me to point at Hugh Grant and be like, yeah, you, you're actually like a worker for Satan. You're not, not a good person. No, not a vet. Bridget makes the decision to bang her boss. And he's the only male that we've seen who can actually hold a conversation I mean, like those of us who know Pride and Prejudice and know that this is based on Pride and Prejudice know that Mark Darcy is the obvious choice, but there's no reason for him to be so blah in this because in this, I feel like he's not the obvious choice. I feel like both of these options suck. You know, Bridget won't wait for anyone and Hugh Grant is there. He's offering his pain and she's like, um, yes, yes, I want to get married. You're the father of my children. Bam. There's no patience. There's no waiting. This is a rom-com. The time's now. She also runs into Darcy a lot, like at a work function and at a random weekend away and she's rude and he's rude and they obviously belong together. Hugh Grant tells Bridget how awful Darcy is and look, spoiler alert, they're lies and he's a liar and he works for the devil. And she believes it because she has no reason not to. Darcy's only ever been crap to her. And later she finds out Hugh Grant is completely awful and he's a worker of Satan and like she's sad because betrayal but also like now she's alone again so that's hard anyway she quits her job in a spectacular fashion and finds a new job where her new boss won't necessarily like she isn't sleeping with him but he's still objectifying her for ratings so like should we be calling hr again she's just trying to survive her new job where she is unprepared, unprofessional, awkward and cringy. Well, that seems to be about all we've got time for down here in Lewisham. Uh, Chief Officer Bevan, thank you very much. Excellent fire station. Uh, and now, back to the studio. And her job is all she cares about for 2.25 minutes. Until. She goes to a dinner party full of smug couples who make her feel really crap about being single. And she has one witty retort and then she just goes back to being really awkward and cringy. And you know what, Bridge? I'm sick of it. But also, guess who's there? Mark friggin' Darcy. If they have so many mutual friends, how is it that it's taken 30 years to meet? I mean, like, they knew each other when, you know, she was, like, four, but then, like, they haven't seen each other since and now she's 32. So, like... Cool. I guess logic isn't a thing in 2001. Anyway, she leaves early because the guy literally tells her, TikTok, time is running out. And I'm just like, um, no, time's not running out. You know what is running out though? My patience with you. And bitch leaves. And I'm like, yes, that's what you should have done about an hour ago. Left the cinema. <laughs> just kidding. It's actually a really fun movie. I really like it. And she's running down the stairs at this dinner party. Mr. Darcy like follows her down and he's like, oh, wait, Bridget. And she's like, oh my God, this loser again. What? Um, I kind of have a crush on you. Bye. And she's like, what the hell? What the friggin' hell? And she's like, hmm, hmm. And now she's interested. She literally hated this dude. And then he's like, um, yeah, like you're cool and charming in like an awkward kind of way. And she's like, yeah, she's really into it. Um, and look, he's not a bad looking dude, but he has no personality and he's only ever been crap to you. So what makes you think it's gonna be any different? But anyway, he pursues her and she passively lets him and he helps her with work and he helps her cook and all that kind of stuff. And he's a boring gentleman with no personality. So. Darcy shows up to a dinner party that Bridget is throwing for herself for her birthday and her friends show up because like they're terrible people but they're like hey we're here for you ba -ba -da -da. they literally do the bare minimum and everyone's there and they're having a great time even though Darcy is boring 
but still perfect. Like we literally still have zero new information on him. Like just what we had at the beginning. All we know is he's, uh, he's rich and he's a lawyer and he used to be married, but he's not anymore because she left him. That's all we know. But we're supposed to be like, yeah, you're the greatest, da, 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 just because it's Colin Firth. And I'm like, mm. yeah, it doesn't work like that. Like, how desperate is she? Like, like any pain will do. That's all. Just any pain. Hugh Grant shows up for hilarity and professes how much he needs Bridget. And then he and Darcy fight to the death. No, just kidding. Um, but they do macho it out on the street, and this pretty funny. Bridget rejects Hugh Grant, and her parents sort themselves out. B story, irrelevant. They still suck. And their friends are weird and pervy. Don't like it. Oh, holy Jesus! The other tarts and vicars. Oh dear, didn't Jeffrey call you? Yeah. Jeffrey, didn't you telephone Colin and Bridget? How's my little Bridget? Bop, bop. Oh, oh. Bop, bop. Oh, oh. Bop, bop. Oh, oh. Disgusting! Bridget manages to sort stuff out with Mr. Darcy, and she finds out that the lies that Hugh Grant told her were in fact lies, and that he's not only a worker of Satan, but the devil himself. Anyway, Bridget professes her deepest interest in Mr. Darcy romantically. Bitch didn't even consider him until he was like, hey, I kind of like you, would you consider something? And she's like, yeah. Even though he has no depth, no interests, no hobbies, no communication skills, literally anything that makes him a person. No, that's not true, he has a face. That's all, he has a face. And we assume a pain. That's why he's, she's going after him. I know this is based on Pride and Prejudice, but it's completely different. Because in Pride and Prejudice, it's less about how perfect Darcy is and more about Elizabeth Bennet and her family and her kind of throwing away the culture and being like, I don't need to get married. I really don't. It's not really something that like I need or want. Like, I'm fine on my own. Whereas in Bridget Jones, she is so hell-bent on it. It's her motivation for everything. is about finding a man and being suitable and worthy for a man. And like, yes, hilarity ensues. It does. Happy birthday, but she's she's still just kind of there, and she's she's like, ah, oh, a man. Whereas good old Lizzie Bennet could take or leave the pain. She's fine. In 2001, there's no reason for Mark Darcy to suck so much. He's so boring, he's so dull, he's so blah. There is literally nothing to him. He's just a face and possibly a peen. We don't know, we assume. I never really realized how much Mr. Darcy actually sucks and how trash he is until I watched Bridget Jones' Baby because in Bridget Jones' Diary and even in The Edge of Reason, there are two options. Hugh Grant the Devil or boring Mark Darcy. Obviously, Mr. Darcy wins that, but then in Bridget Jones's Baby, there is a third option who is legitimately viable and can communicate like a human. What? That's amazing. That's the one I pick. But anyway, that's for another day and another video. Mr. Darcy is garbage. Bye.